And I'm joined now by Dili Hussein from the Muslim News website Five Pillars and Philip Bond, who's the director of the independent think tank Res Republica. Res Publica, excuse me. Thanks for coming in, both of you. Um, Philip, let me start with you. I, I don't know if you heard in that report some confusion about what British values are, tolerance, friendship, a cup of tea. What well, are they? I, I don't think any of the answers were necessarily wrong, but let's be very clear. Unless we all, in some sense, share a common value set, we're in terrible danger. After all, it was George Orwell who pointed out that one of the reasons Britain didn't fall into communism or fascism is essentially we shared common decency. Now, common decency uh, is something we all, I think, should regard as precious and need to repeat and recreate at every point in our history. So British values at a time of incredible polarisation, when we're polarising on education, class, race, place, where we're beginning to track American politics mm. and the divisive kind of nature of what's happened there, they're incredibly important. And I think the Secretary of State is right to actually help foreground the debate by arguing that the state should stand up for those values. Right. And I think that will provoke the debate that I think is sorely needed. But if we can only boil it down to common decency... Uh, or tolerance or friendship. I mean, you kind of think that's stating the obvious. I mean, we'd have, we would have thought, we would have hoped that that is something that is taught in by families, in schools. It, it's, it, we're embedded in that sort of culture. Well, I, I think, you know, Sajid Javid actually gave a very good list of what those values would be, and I don't think that was stating mm. the obvious. I think freedom uh, of speech, uh, freedom of religion. These are things actually under threat today in many ways because it's precisely because we haven't had the debate about British values that you get different accounts that actually start to drive wedges between people and it's very important in a country that's always been civic, that's always been on the front line fighting against racism mm. that we uphold these values okay. in the face of what confronts us. Dili Hussein, would you be prepared to utter an oath of allegiance that talks about decency and tolerance? Well, no, because... You I wouldn't be? No, I wouldn't be, because ultimately... British Is that because you don't believe in decency and tolerance? No, exactly. I absolutely believe in those yeah. things, but I don't think I need to subscribe to a, an arbitrary set of values to show my humanity or decency or even loyalty to this country. When you think of loyalty, oh, see, it actually reminds me of the kind of unfortunate McCarthy era of America, which was all about curtailing free speech. And it's interesting that the respected guest mentioned uh, George Orwell. It's exactly these kind of oaths and allegiances which essentially creates a, a kind of police state. But, I mean, in America, the oath of allegiance is something that is uttered every morning in every state school. And it's optional. And, well, it is optional, but, it's, but it is, it's, no one is upset about it. I mean, mm. most people, frankly, wherever they're from, you know, go along with it. And it's because it defends the document that defends everyone's individual values. As you saw from that video, British values means different things to different people. What do they mean to you? What do they mean to me? Um, as a British citizen living in this country, I want to be good to my neighbours. I want to contribute positively to this society. I want to abide by the laws of this land, um, as long as it doesn't contravene my faith. Um, and obviously, just generally, just be good and nice to people, and obviously contribute as much as I can positively. But that said, does that it, satisfy you? What, what Dilly just well, said? No, well, it, it just it seems contradictory. We know from Louise Casey's report that we've had a culture of multiculturalism that has tended to divide people in the name of uniting them. We know that we've had separate development where we've essentially sponsored values that are hostile to what we all hold in common. So I think it's right for us to articulate and state what British values are and actually we probably already would be in broad agreement but they're quite unique, they're quite precious and if you chart world value systems they're not necessary, they don't come with being born, they're actually practiced. And I think what the Secretary of State is saying is actually we need the state to actually re-articulate those values precisely because the aim, of, the aim of this is integration. If people come to us from abroad, we want them to know our value system so they can integrate So is that with what us. this is about? This is about profiling a particular group of no, it's, pro it's yeah. profiling all of us. And actually, well, if you can't okay, define values, you, ca you, you can't defend them. And this okay. is part of let's defining British values. The thing is, we can't dress up, again, these arbitrary set of values because no one had a contribution in defining them. And they're basically, not arbitrary, though. They are, they are arbitrary because they're being used. No, they're well, because well, they're, well, lived, they're well, lived, they're lived and used. They're certainly not organic. They're certainly not well, organic. Of course they're organic. No, so how, they're, would they're, how would you deal with extremist members of any community, including yeah. your community, who say, well, actually, we don't believe in democracy, we don't believe in tolerance, we believe in our way, of life uh, and no one else's. How would you deal with that? 
Well, we have to obviously question with regards to first, let's define extremism. And within, within the prevent strategy, um, British values is stipulated. Well, how about the absence of tolerance? The absence of tolerance. Well, look, if you believe in something, I can respect for you to actually believe that. I don't necessarily have to agree with you. Mm -hmm. but, you know, as long as these called extremists in whichever community they may lay in, they don't, as long as they don't come out and actually take the law into their own hands. But the important point here is mm -hmm. that we can't use this set of values and dress it out and, and sugarcoat mm -hmm. it as integration. It's, it appears to be forced okay. assimilation to me. Okay. Uh, big discussion for another day. Thank you very much for coming in. Dilly Hussein, Philip Blunt.